gravity is just a theory. I like that picture. But what we're going to be talking about now is gravitational field strength. So what's the equation for it and how to use it in context? So first of all, we're going to define it. It's going to be the gravitational force per unit mass that some point mass experiences. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Let's actually try to quantify it. So we use lowercase g for this, and we say g equals f over m. See, that's why I see it's a force per unit mass. So if you have some object that has a mass m, then the force divided by its mass, that tells you the gravitational field strength. Now I want to go a little bit further though, because let's investigate. Remember our equation for f. So just saying, so you no, know, I'm just gonna do this down here. I'm gonna say, well, g equals f. Let's replace for f. It's g times big M times little m over r squared. At least you could see it that way. And then of course that's all divided by m because here we're dividing it by the mass here. Now keep in mind, uh, the one in your data booklet says g times m1, m2 over r squared. I prefer the big M, little m, because you'll see here, things cancel out nicely. Ta-da! So you end up with then that g, this lowercase g then, that equals g times m over r squared. So you see how we get that. So that's the reason why in your data booklet there's an extra equation that goes like this. right? They put the g like this and they put the m here and the uh, r squared like this. So this is why we have this equation as well. So it's just nice to show you where it comes from. Because now we can start looking at some of the units for this. So what should the units of gravitational field strength be? Well it should be force over mass. So that should be newtons per kilogram. So I'll put that in. So newtons per kilogram. Great. Force between the masses is in newtons. The masses are just going to be in kilograms. And we have our good old gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So what about the units for this? Let's just look at this, because I want to show you something that's kind of interesting what happens here. So I'm going to write these down uh, maybe in, um, I'll go like this. I'll say, well, it's units of force, so that's going to be newtons over uh, kilograms. But remember what a newton is. If you remember F equals MA, it's a mass times acceleration. So it's got to be a kilogram meter per second squared. So that's what this is. And then of course over kilograms on the bottom. If you look at this then, the kilograms will cancel out. So I've got kilograms out. And I end up with, hey, hold on. The units for G then, I'm just writing it with square brackets to mean the units, it's just meters per second squared. And if you think, it does not look like an acceleration. Yes, it does. In fact, this is, the, I think, the, the really key thing for exams, at least, for exam questions, is this idea right here. So I'm going to talk about these right here. This is really where you get to put it all together. And there's so many different exam questions that sort of play on this idea here. So first of all, G, this little G here that we just found, it is the same as what's used on Earth. So this 9.81 meters per second squared. So why don't we use 9.81? Well, that's because that only works on Earth at the surface of Earth. So, for example, if you wanted to, you could put in, for example, what's uh, the mass of the Earth. Divide that by the radius of the Earth squared, and multiply that by this constant, and you'll get something close to 9.81. It's not exact because there's some weird things about the density of the Earth, and the Earth isn't quite a sphere. So there's a few things like that, but it comes very close to this. But why do we care? That's because this then works for any object. So you could be on, I don't know, the moon. And you could say, I want to be on the moon. Well, what's its mass? What's its radius? Therefore, you can figure out the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. So this is really, really powerful. So this gravitational field strength is the acceleration due to gravity. That means you can do it for any object of any mass with a radius r. That's actually pretty powerful, I think. And that's actually pretty cool. This is how you know scientists can actually say, hey, we know what the mass of this thing is and the radius of this thing is, therefore we know what the acceleration due to gravity will be. So we know that like you can jump extra high or something, or if like you're on a really massive object, like super massive and, and very dense, then you know the gravitational field strength will be very, very large. Well that means that maybe you can't even jump at all. So it all depends on that. So let's take a look at some examples. And I tried to use a, a real one. So Mars has two moons, uh, Deimos and Phobos. Deimos is, uh, was it the Roman god of fear, I think it was? Roman or Greek, I can't remember. But it's related to the god of fear. But it's a very small little moon, and it's and it's not even uh, very massive, which means it doesn't have enough mass to make it like circular. So it's, it's kind of rocky and bumpy and weird. But if we assume an average radius, which is actually what's accepted here, so we're going to find out, hey, if you're going to stand on Deimos, for example, what would be the acceleration due to gravity there? 
That's a real question you could ask. I thought it was cool, so let's just try to solve it. So first of all, let's just use this. We have the mass, we have the radius, fine. So let's just look at this and see what to do. Well, we could say g equals f over m, which is again, just to show you, that's g m over r squared. All right, we just write this down just so we have it here. Great, what do we do with this? Well, I just put in the numbers, that's it. So that means then that g will just be, let's see, it'll be 6.67, I just have to put in that constant, times 10 to the negative 11. All right, that's g, times the mass. It's just this simple, just 1.5 times 10 to the 15. There's nothing weird about that, it's in kilos. Divide that by the radius squared. So 6.2 times 10 to the 3 is just the same thing as 6,200. But don't forget to square it. That's a big mistake that people make. Now I just got to do this on my calculator. So that's it's that simple. I just get out my trusty calculator and I just write this down. So 6.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 11. All that times 1.5 times 10 to the 15. All that divided by in brackets, 6 to 200. All that squared. And I get an answer of 0 0.002603. 0 0.002603. So then I could say, uh, let's see, to two significant figures, because I can use them here and here. So I'll say 0 0.0026. And what are the units of it? Oh yeah, it's meters per second squared. So this tells you the acceleration. So do you see how knowing about uh, this gravitational field strength, because that is the same thing as the acceleration uh, of free fall. So I think that's awesome. So the acceleration due to gravity is g. Now, what is this? This is super small. Compare that to 9.81. You know, when you jump, for example, or if something falls, it's just 9.81. This is tiny compared to it. And we're going to see later on, actually, I think we're going to make a video about it later uh, for escape speed. Uh, for that one, for example, I think uh, let's investigate, like, what do you need to escape? But I'm pretty sure, actually, you can just escape by, by just jumping really hard. Or, like, on a skateboard ramp, for example, I'm pretty sure, like, if you're on a skateboard and you did, like, a jump, I'm pretty sure you could just leave it. <laughs> so <laughs> don't do big jumps if you ever find yourself standing on demos. Um, all right, let's do another one. So what's the acceleration of free fall? Again, we're just asking, you know, we want A the acceleration of free fall, but that's just equal to G. And again, we're going to just going to write this equation down again. Remember, it's f over m, which equals g m over r squared. That's our general equation we're going to use. So now we have a planet that has 10 times Earth's mass and a radius that is 20 times that of Earth. Let's just start figuring this out and see how we go. So we've got g equals, let's see, we've got, well, capital G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll actually leave it. I'll just leave it in uh, terms of g for now. So I've got G, that's true. I've got M, but M is actually 10 times the Earth's mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 10 times math, and are you okay with that? I'm just going to say E for Earth. Divide that by the radius of the Earth, uh, but it's 20 times. So it's 20 R E. And don't forget the whole thing is squared, not just the R squared, but 20 squared. Well, then what do I get? That means I end up with, uh, let's see here, well, I'll put the 10 in front, so I'll say 10 times g times me, all that over, uh, whoops, my e didn't look very nice, I'll try to fix it, there we go, over, well, what's 20 squared? Well, 2 squared is 4, and add 2 zero, so that'll be 400, so 400 r e squared. Now let's go a step further here. Uh, well, 10 divided by uh, 400, it's the same thing. You can just drop some of the zeros here. So you can say we've got G equals, maybe I'll just keep writing it down here. We've got G equals 1 over 40 times G times ME over RE squared. Here's the problem. They didn't tell us what the radius of Earth is and what the mass of the Earth. So this how do I find this? I mean, I know G, yes, there's this capital G, but I don't know mass of the Earth and radius of the Earth. But here's the clever part. If you remember about this right here, remember that on Earth, at least, we do know what G is. Notice, this is the same thing as writing G. You know, like G, lowercase g here is G m over r squared. In other words, this right here, we know this G equals 9.81, this lowercase g. In other words, Capital G times ME over RE squared is the same thing as this. So that's the key. That was the not so simple part. Okay, so really 
recognizing this was not the trivial part. That I thought it was a little bit tougher. But there it is. We just replace it. So that means then we say, oh, well, then g is just going to equal 1 over 40 times 9.81 because we knew that as at least the acceleration due to gravity on uh, Earth. And so if we put in this one here, we just have 9.81 over 40. So let's just do that. So 9.81, divide that by 40, and we end up with, well, 0.24525. Okay, so well, we'll just do two significant figures. So g is approximately equal to then 0 0.2, and we'll say 5. And this, of course, this will be meters per second squared, because that's still the acceleration of free fall, the acceleration due to gravity, or calling it the gravitational field strength. Same, same. Can you see we've learned about gravitational field strength, the equation for it, for example, and how this lowercase g is actually the same thing as the acceleration due to gravity. Now on Earth it's 9.81, but around another object it's something different, some different number. And we've seen some examples how we can calculate.